Whoa. Something weird just happened. Well, hello there, beautiful internet and amazing creatures of the beyond. Unfortunately, my game shifted to decided to shift to another monitor out of a sudden. Let's see if we can fix this from the options. Apparently not. I'll just exit and restart it really quick. Now that is uh, something new. Should be okay now. <laughs> How are you all? I hope you're doing fantastic. There we go. So resume last save. I just love when the game allows me to continue from my last save. Well, we left um, over here. We're all the way up here, actually. And we're going to discuss with this guy. You come up to a short, bull-necked man staring at his uh, security monitor. One of the switches, uh, one of them switches off and showing nothing but a reflection of his own concerned face, as well as unintelligible figure walking up behind him. His eyes widen and he recoils as soon as he becomes aware that he is not alone. One quiet moment passes and then he speaks. Woo! -hoo! You, you scared the hell out of me, man. He pulls down his respirator. Ah. Don't sneak up like that. Sorry, didn't mean that. Yeah, it's okay, but damn, I'm Harold. He briefly inspects you and peers over uh, your your shoulder. Just a moment, let me lower the volume. Hey, you're here about my auto turret? Lucas sent me here to talk to you about that. That man, he's not taking this serious at all. Look, I got a situation here. Someone took down one of my cameras right outside. They want me blind, you see? So they could attack and break through the gates. And have you seen those? Uh, they're not the big, thick split gates Malcolm's got in the checkpoint. No, no. I've, uh, I've got a pair of oversized trays between me and the lurkers' hoarders, hordes. The lurkers are like a band of, uh, well, riffraff more or less. All I want is some extra ammo for my turret and one more turret. It's dangerous out, uh, out there. What if uh, there's n not, if it's not the lurker hordes, but, but what? A common thug that stole your camera gives you a blank stare. Have you been, have you ever even been outside? Are you derailed? I'm not going out there. Ah, uh, well, then I'll go. You will? Of course, this is my station now, as much as yours. Uh, that's good to hear. Oops, well, probably he said good luck. Or like, accidentally clicked the exit but whatever yeah we have to just kind of explore but we will not go yet out there maybe actually i could do something let's see if i can uh yeah we can look at the cameras let's see this is the camera that's broken this camera shows the corridor outside the door this camera shows the corridor inside, the interior here. But we cannot exit this way, so we'll have to do it some other way. Got 50 XP. That's super nice. What's that? Oh, and it's for notes. So someone taken down one of Harold's under passage camera and he thinks it's a preparation for an attack uh, on his guard post. Investigate. What is going on? Talk to the council tanner in his office in the commons, level 3. Talk to Harold. Okay, we talk to Harold. So, we'll have to investigate, but we won't be in a hurry. First, we'll just go around, talk to a few more people, get to know the area a little bit better. There is still more to explore on the sides, but I'm not prepared to go there. 
Oh, we can't still. This is red. I could sneak. I probably could. Well, we could just give it a try. Let's see. Just have to be sneaky enough. Let's do this. Oh, okay, cool. Those were some shells, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, we're being seen, no problem. Can't I get out of... Okay, never mind. So let's see what we've stolen here. Some shotgun shells. And we're gonna sell it. Probably at another station because they might check if it's stolen here. I'm not sure. Let's go to level 2. Uh, no, actually we've been to a level 2. Let's go to administration and library. We'll leave Tanner for later. So it's nice how immersive they went. It's like, uh, it really shows like this is a livable place. They made like all the accommodations and what have you. This is locked, but we could probably try to sneak. I'm not sure if we can hack this. Let's see. Yeah, we can be seen, but what if we go here? And then come back. Yeah. There is something definitely in that box. So, yeah, they can see us with uh, with time, the longer we stay close to them. Let's see if it's, uh, there's something in this particular box. Nothing. This one is closed. Let's talk. It's nice and quiet here. Commoner. So we can't get inside there. We could try to steal something from here. Ah, but we're being seen instantly. Well, we'll just not click on anything then. Oh, we should talk to Vera. You met Vera previously during your testing period. She is one of the counselors here at the South Gate Station, more known as SGS. Good to see you. Your, uh, you found your way to my office, Eros. How do you like my new home uh, so far? How do you like your new home so far? Sorry. The text is a bit difficult to write, like white on black. It's kind of fancy. It's pretty good. I can see myself staying here for a long time. That's good to hear. So anyway, how can I help you? What can you tell me about Core City, which is a different place in the game? It's a city to the north that spans both levels uh, of underrail. It serves as a gateway to both the upper underrail and the United Station territory to the north. We'll get more into that later. There's plenty to explore, lots of factions to meet, a lot of uh, conflicts between them. And yeah, we'll play a role. I've decided you can go like the negative guy, the neutral guy, or the positive guy. Those are kind of the, the ways you can play. Being neutral is quite tricky, but it can be worth it. Siding with one or the other uh, is beneficial as well, but it's more of a variety, and then again you can just kill everyone and be done with everything. But that part is not very inspiring. There's plenty of fights to be done, so we don't have to attack the cities. The city used to be controlled by the Biocorp security forces, but they went rogue and split into smaller factions. This was followed up by a couple of years uh, of street wars between these factions. So the Biocorp is kind of the... Well, <laughs> it's a corporation that was controlling most of these stations since we also saw that uh, when we picked up the phone but the biocorp eventually dissolved but we'll get into the lore of that as we play there's a lot to explore and a lot of theories about it and 
what broke it and what happened to it. Really, really cool stuff. And the, the, every story, it's a little piece of the puzzle that makes the full full story so compelling. The fighting ceased eventually in light of uh, outside threats and serious infrastructural, prob infrastructural problems. And nowadays, the three surviving factions rule the city together through their uh, appointed mayors. Can you tell me a bit about United Stations? Certainly, United Stations, also called Union by some, is a confederacy of stations in the north and central underrail. It's an attempt to unify the enti entirety of underrail so that we could all work together towards a better future for the human race. Also, uh, another thing that I should tell you in advance, what we're playing here, all the map that we'll explore in the game, is just a tiny fraction of the underrail because the underrail spans very far and it's like how should i say it's like one small country that is in a vast network and there are other let's call them countries or extended factions of the factions that are here but it's it's quite a complex uh, political system and whatever else happens because there's there are migrations there are people coming from various parts there will be stories telling you about places that are not in the game they're actually making a second underrail game they're working it on, on it right now such as the hex city which will it will be mentioned and uh, yeah probably we'll uh, explore more in the next game which i can't wait to play because this game was just freaking fantastic and they kept updating it and making it quite quite balanced um so, okay uh that we could all work together towards a better future for the human race well that's debatable similar to our station the U union is ruled by a council of five most stations of the union have some degree of autonomy as well. The United Stations are constantly expanding, and while no station here in the South are yet to become part of it, something like that will surely happen in the near future. Um, I want to learn about the Protectorate. So, these are kind of like the three main factions that broke from the Biocorp. The Biocorp was vast, and it wasn't the only corporation it will get clearer sooner as we read more of the lore so let's talk about the protectorate the andre protectorate is a military organization that protects the united station from external and internal threats it predates the union itself and if uh, it also played a crucial role in its creation the Protectorate is under the command of General Malak, who is widely considered to be the most powerful man in the Underland. He holds a special place in the United Nations Council of Five, and some also believe him to be the de facto ruler of it. Um, I like that we also get extra information after we go through these texts. Like, we're not being forced to just get three lines, we explore them and be on our way. So more things unlock as we discuss so it, it feels like a natural conversation which is really cool our uh, their plan for sgs which is this station to join the united Nations at, uh, at some point our citizens and our counselors are divided on that matter we currently have good trading relations with the union and i personally think it would be a good idea to be among the first to join it here in the south. We are arguably the most powerful faction in this part, so we could possibly we could position ourselves advantageously in their organization and also retain a high degree of independence, which is a very good point. Uh, this this station is quite in tip top shape in my opinion. But there are many underrails. 
<laughs> and many la layers to this uh, whole faction thing. It's not just uh, white and uh, black, or black and white. There's a lot of shades of grey and other colors in between. It was, this would also ensure we avoid any potential military conflict in the future should the Protectory decide to move against some of the less civilized communities in the neighborhood. Oh, trust me, they're quite uncivilized. But as I said, not everyone agrees with me here. We must understand that many of our current citizens come from organizations that have, for various reasons, been protectorate's target in the past. So they are not very keen on being buddies with their old enemies. So yeah, some old grudges by heart. But let me uh, ask you, what is your opinion on the matter? Would you like to see your station become a member of the Union Station? Hmm, that's cool, because usually we are the one asking questions. We're not used to being asked questions in RPGs. Well, there are newer RPGs that do that, but in general, the RPGs don't, don't play this card very often. Hmm. Well, let's say I'm not sure. I'm reserved. Uh, I'm reserving judgment until I learn more about all of this because clearly we just got here. We don't have a lot of experience, and it's interesting that not everything is explained to us on a platter. Sure, we can check the history, but our character is supposed to be born in this world, so it kind of knows the stories of what happened and so on. So there is no reason to bring them up. Unless we research it ourselves, which is a good approach, a very good approach. Hell no, I'm just, it just sounds to me like a, a silly facade for the, this Malak guy ruling the under rail through a gun. We don't know, we shall see. Okay, you are a wise man, I hope uh, that, like me, your future dealings with the United, uh, United Stations will encourage you to support their efforts. See you later, alligator. So, yeah. Very interesting. Now, there are some cool things here. We could go and try to steal, but since we're not focused on stealing, I'll, I'll add at the end of the series, I'll add my build and everything that I tried to follow. And we'll probably could just make a similar build. I, I suppose this one will be quite an easy build. Commoner, commoner, security, let's see what's on these shelves. Nada de nada. They cannot steal from that, clearly. Um, another commoner. It seems we do not have a computer available for us to look at. Eh, okay, we shall check them later. Maybe I should close all of these doors. We're not savages. And it's nice that most of the equipment here are, is in working condition. We won't see much of that in other places. There are places, but not as civilized as this. Or as clean as this. Um... Let's go to medical and psionics. So this is a very important place. Um, okay, that's locked. And we definitely cannot pick, hack or pick lock that because it's a 19. Now, if we, if you would plan to play as a psionic, this is the man you want to see, Pascal. But playing as a psionic is extremely sophisticated, so don't jump into your first playthrough trying to think like you're gonna be the best space wizard out there because you're gonna make mistakes you will not get the right synergies again you cannot respect so you will be stuck with some of the issues and it's better to try psionics on your second playthrough in my opinion because psionics has some layers of complexity to it, and... Huh? What? Nothing. 
that there are kind of two types of psionic and one is more specialized than the other but they play different and you can also combine them with other sort of subclasses or other classes if you wish but yeah and you cannot you, you will have access to all of the spells but you can only use a handful of them or depending on your playstyle of course so you'll have to choose wisely which one you want to focus on eh, complicated stuff Pascal ah uh, hello there Eros uh, first of all let me congratulate you on your admittance to our little station I'm sure you'll love it here well it isn't exactly little but yeah in comparison to the other places it is quite tiny uh, it's good that you came. I actually wanted to talk to you about some of the results from all those tests we did earlier. Is there something wrong with me? No, no, quite the contrary. Sorry if I scare you. Uh, you see, test results show that you have certain amounts of psionic potential. I'm not derailed. <laughs> I'm not saying you are. It's not a bad thing. On the contrary, it's a great gift to inherit, and it won't make you... I mean, it doesn't have to turn you insane. Yeah, so... There is a thing, if you overuse... I, I don't know how to say this. This is why you should l l read a little bit about Sion before starting it, if you go overboard with psionic, your psionic powers because you could become kind of like a blood mage and use your uh, health to generate more action points it could turn you a little bit insane and you lose you will get some debuffs it's, it's a bit tricky and it applies into certain types of schools of magic let's call them, psionic powers so yeah, it can get pretty ugly, so you could really break your characters. Still, it's it's not impossible to finish the game, but it will make it extremely hard. Um, and, okay, and continue. Allow me to explain what psionic potential really is. It's relatively rare. Uh, inheritable, complex genetic traits that trigger development of certain otherwise latent components in the brain. It allows a person to perform some subtle psionic invocations such as influence, influencing the mind of others as well as some not so subtle ones such as causing radical temperature changes and telekinetic manipulations. Basically magic <laughs> at this point. Um, uh, how did this genetic train come to be? No one is really sure. Research indicates that it is relatively recent genetic mutation, but it sure could not have been a random one. So many things about it are just too complex and convenient to be anything but artificially designed. Hmm. There are problems with this hypothesis, though. Former Biocorp's head of genetics research, Dr. Hall Roche, outlined the, these problems best in his thesis. I won't bore you with uh, details, but in essence, the, of the uh, but the essence of the problem is that with the technology that we currently have at our disposal, creating Testing and integrating genetic structure of such complexity is simply not possible without a colossal amount of trial and error work. That is a bare assumption. So much trial and error work, uh, Roche argue, that even if you combine all the genetic processors in the world in this time and let them work on the subject for the entire time of their existence, they would still be extremely unlikely to produce these results. Furthermore, Roche points out that the structures of the brain were inner version that, yeah, this inner version is the problem, that allows psionics, psionic activity take place uh, were, never, uh, were never studied in such depth, even though we know how 
plenty, uh, we know plenty about how the brain as a whole works, there is a large gap between the top-down research performed by psycho psychologists and neurologists and bottom research done by neuroscientists study neurons and receptors. Inside this gap uh, lie psionics, but due to the brain's nature and complexity, those who wish to study it need to start from either this direction, of this direction, and slowly approach the middle. So you see, it's a bit of a mystery. We know much more about how to make it work than how it actually works. Interesting. Indeed it is. Is there something else would you like to know? Ah, uh, all this sounds disturbing. I don't want any psionic mambo jumbo going in my head. As you wish. If you change your mind, let me know. Understood. Or like, we can nod and leave. Would be awkward. So you could actually come back here and retake psionics. I don't think there is a limitation to that. But we should be careful. I'm, I'm totally going to avoid it. Because once you take it, it's going to have a few small adverse effects. In the sense that you will lose some HP. And we kind of don't want that at this point. And besides, we would have to put a lot of... Which one was it? Forgot. We'd have to put a lot of points in willpower for them to work and a lot into these uh, psi powers, these four. Well, even you can only pair two if you want, depending which one you like. Uh, but yeah, it is complex. Hey, doctor, and we have a patient here. Luckily, there was no fatalities in the earthquake. Oh, we have nothing? Maybe we have here in the medical locker. Usually they don't. Yes. Thank you. I'll take this. These are quite expensive at the beginning of the game, so let's hold on to them. Okay, so... Bodybuilder. I can hold a brew bottle between my packs, man. Well, I don't doubt that. There should have been somebody here, but... Maybe not now. So we have a gym. Let's go... To engineering and cyber labs. And this is... Basically, this base is our house for the time being. Later on, we will go into other cool places. But uh, at the beginning of the game, we'll make quite a few trips here and there. We'll keep it as our base of operation. And we will have to talk to many people here. They will offer us some help. They will also sell us some stuff. Wonder, can I sneak? <laughs> he instantly saw me. So, okay, let's not steal. Although it is tempting, I'll, it's not worth it. There's plenty of items and materials, and we're playing on normal, we're not playing on super difficult. Now oh, we can take some of this, sell it later. Inventory management will be required since we have um, yes. since we have uh, so little uh, strength, so we won't be able to carry much. But I did take the red pack, which gives us plus 50. So I don't know how much can we carry though. Does it say anywhere? Well, it should say carry capacity somewhere, but whatever. Goran. We aren't supposed to watch the arena in here, so keep this quiet, okay? Oh, he's watching the TV. A lot of beer here. 
and then we have uh, a beautiful uh, lady poster over there. Okay, let's meet some of the locals here. Yeah, I'll take this. Harold. Howdy, you must be the new guy, name's Harold. I'm in charge of this little workshop here. Nice to meet you, Harold. I'm Eros. So, you're looking for something specific or just looking around? Do you have any stuff to trade? I've got plenty. Take a look. Um, so, he has 40 care repair kits, 5 metal compounds, 2 pneumatic. So, it's cool that you can read here instead of just numbering here, <laughs> trying to count them here. So, some of these cool things are uh, Omni tool. This will come in handy a lot. But it's expensive, and probably we're gonna find some along the way. Again, the pick locks are quite expensive at this stage, so we're not gonna buy them from here. Do you have any more dialogue with you? No? Okay, we'll talk to you later. Now this, this is a work of art. Actually, I think I can open this door as well. This is the server room, if I remember correctly. Let's see. So yeah, we can't look through these places. Najet or Nayet. I need more caffeine. Wayne. If I run this script, I'll make all the sentry bots spin around and play techno music. <laughs> ah, that's cute. Now, Ezra is one of the trainers that can teach you many things, especially about psionics. And he's also one of the main characters, and one of the most interesting ones in the game as well, and we meet him from the beginning. As he turns around to face you, you immediately notice there is something off with this uh, man. His face is pale and hairless. He is missing one of his eyes, and instead, wires protrude from his eye socket, traveling over the side of his face and disappearing down the back of his neck. Oh, the other eye is almost colorless, with the pupils so contracted that you question whether that can even uh, whether that he can even see at all. He speaks with a calm and even voice. Hello, Eros. I'm Ezra. Uh, I act as the head network administrator and chief of the entire engineering sector. Are you blind, Ezra? <laughs> Ezra raises his hand slowly and extends it towards you. He holds two of his fingers in front of your face for a moment, each pointing at one of your eyes before retracting, them, retracting your hand. Uh, what is it exactly do you do here? Me specifically, the cyber department uh, or the engineering sector? I mean, you. I make sure that all parts of the station's internal network and communication communicating properly and securely and that all the scripts are running as they should. I also oversee all operations of engineering sector. How about the cyber department? Uh, we maintain an important uh, no, when we maintain and improve the station's internal network, we write programs for all automated systems in the station. So they're kind of maintaining everything and keeping everything uh, locally in-house. Uh, what does the engineering sector do in general? We construct, deconstruct, research, upgrade. This thing, all the specific things we do would take too much of, a, of my time. Go around and talk to people working here. They might be willing to let you know the details of their projects. Um, let's talk about something else. Do you have anything to trade? So he does. Now, these are quite expensive at the beginning. They're not the highest tier. 
but uh, they're very useful. We're gonna want to have a Hexor or something more advanced, but they'll get in there. Also, keep in mind they also have a limit on how much they can trade with you per week, so you can't sell everything to them. And you can't sell anything to them, you have to sell to the correct person. So for example, here we have some metal scraps, we have empty shotgun shell and this 12 shotgun shell. Rubber balls, I think, I'm not sure exactly what they were used for. But we might want to get rid of these things because they're not gonna help us, so we can get some extra catch. But you cannot sell it here because he sells electronics. So for this, we will have to go to the armory. And he also sells a lot of cool blueprints. Blueprints we can also find through the world. Shock bolts, this will come in handy later on. Maybe we'll even craft our own. We just need to learn the recipe, of course. So let's see if I can sell anything in particular to this guy. Oh, oh sorry. So yes, we could sell this, but we want to keep this on us in case we get damaged. Because as you can see, there is like a durability 240 by 240 for fabric, and this is what we can patch it up with. And this one also has durability, 180, and we can use this to repair. Uh, we, can, we can also make those on our own, and we can also buy them or steal them. Stealing is actually a very good approach for stealth, but again, I didn't go that way. Um, okay, so we've been here, let's go to Agronomy and Pans to meet the last guys. So this is the Agronom, well, this is the part where they study creatures. And if you're into psionics, you will definitely want these mushrooms. You will find them in various parts of the world. And you can do a lot with them. You can process them, eat them raw. It's up to you. I think Vera's probably the greatest flower admirer in SGS. Probably. Quinton. You come up to a ring. A rangy man with uh, long hair who is cutting open the head of a large monstrous creature. Formerly an untainable beast, it is now but a stiff volunteer to the post-mortem dissection to science. And soon enough, the man makes the final incision after which he pushes his hand to, the, uh, to extract a single long sharp spine. Greenish sticky fluid dribbled out the opening of, uh, and all over the floor as the man wipes his the spine clean before laying it uh, aside. And that is the moment in which he notices you. Careful, you don't want to get in contact with this toxin. He returns to cutting through the creatures as he talks to you. My name is Quinton. Don't bother introducing yourself. I know who you are. You're Eros. And you just got admitted to the station. Uh, I'd shake your hand, but you can see why <laughs> that wouldn't be a good idea. Uh, what kind of creature is that? This is a borrower. It's one nasty creature that digs around, laying eggs all over the place. They are more numerous deeper underground, but you can still find a few roaming the lower underrail and surrounding caves. If you meet one, be careful, it will spit thick hard spines uh, at you that are coated with poison. And I, I'm kind of debating if I should play the poison build. It is a powerful build. But we will need to learn a lot about biology. We shall see. Uh, what do you do exactly? I'm collecting its poison glands. We can use uh, those to produce other chemicals or to coat crossbow bolts. Mm. 
What's in the room over there? He nods and returns to his work. Oh, didn't I ask him that? I think I pressed the wrong. Ah, I pressed five accidentally. Uh, we're growing mushrooms of uh, different kinds there. Of course, most notably the mind mushroom. They are one of the most potent and certainly one of the safest psionic uh, catalysts. The largely pop popular psi boosters are made for uh, from mind mushrooms, in case you didn't know. Now, since I'm playing on normal, most of these buffs are not required, but if you're going to play on harder difficulty, they are a must, so you'll have to go picking mushrooms and all sorts of other uh, things to make to, to produce our own uh, stuff because everything will be super expensive and difficult to obtain. Do you have anything to trade? He stops working, sets his knife aside and carefully removes his gloves. Of course, let's barter. So we could use this for tailoring, but there are other ways. Although, hmm, I think I will avoid doing a tailor build in detail, because that requires to get some feats to make it worth it. But I'm still gonna invest into tailoring, because there are some, uh, some things related to tailoring during some quests, so we want to have some tailoring around. Not the... Mm, we, well, there, there are other ways to go around and improve our tailoring without using our skills, but we'll get to that in, later. In, in the game. But we will want to synthesize some of the things. Morphine is a really good uh, medical thing you will want to have around. This is a Psy booster, if you go to the Psy. This one is also good for psionics. Uh, you can also make uh, these are cave hoppers. Yeah. You can also make some patching kits out of this. But again, we need to buy this. These are super important, though quite expensive right now. Actually, I would want to buy one of these. Damn, that's so expensive. Oh, actually, no, it's not. It's a hundred. So maybe I can. Not all 20. I want to buy... How can I get only one? Oh. No? I don't remember how I split. Ah, double click. Maybe get three of them? So here we have to give uh, cash, we can do an auto, or we can give other items and it's kind of a bartering system, and depending on your other skills you can play around. You can go a little bit under, but not by much. Ah. It also depends on how much uh, relationships you have with the station and how much they like you. Here you're kind of light, so everything should be okay -ish. Wait, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I can buy all of them. Not all of them, it seems. Maybe I'll just. Ah. How can I split them? Let's buy ten of these. They are, well, or actually, I'll, I'll, I'll come back here later if I really need to. I was thinking of getting some, but it's not really worth it right now. So, Logan, welcome to the hypo, Hypotonics. So, basically, here you could find some uh, interesting things. You can also make medicine out of all of these plants. But of course, we cannot take anything because it's protected. What? What is it? Admiring something something? 
ter um trito. And then we can go here. And again, plenty of stuff to be taken if we want. This is locked. <laughs> These are pigs, they're quite cute. These are the tame ones. And these are grass, uh, cave hopped, sorry. Okay, let's talk to Big Brett. Must be Eros, they call me Big Brett. So, you've passed all the tests, I see. I couldn't have been, it couldn't have been easy. Those were just getting harder and harder in recent years. They were pretty hard, but I like a challenge. You're going to love it here then. So, what brings you to the pens? What is this place? This is the agronomy sector where we grow and harvest all kinds of plants, but we also bred animals for food in short. Our job is to provide food to the station in any way possible. Have anything to trade? Now, this can be used to capture some animals in the game. These are super awesome to have around. Uh, I'm gonna get a few of these later. We shall see. Right now I'm not gonna throw any cash out the window. We're still pretty limited in cash. We can close light switch. Light switches. Which is really nice. Although NPCs can open them back. I know it, we're taking our time and it takes a bit longer to do stuff here. Now, in these boxes, we shall find some things. Oh, actually we can get tranquilizer for that spawn. But I'm gonna take all of this for now. But I'm not gonna pick these ones up yet, mainly because there will be a quest we'll have to do later on and it will force us. So I don't wanna take them in advance to carry extra weight. And let's go up to the cave tunnel exit just to have a look. Oh, actually we still have a place to go. So we can go up this way, this way. This part will let us out, Malcolm, but not right now. And this is actually another way for us to travel. Uh, it's quite interesting. I don't think there's anything else here. Oh, there is actually some... Oh, knives. I really like knives. Drawing knives are the best. This one is used for some crafting things. Okay. There was a dog here. Ah, there is a dog. Oof, oof. And if you have a dog crate, or whatever that was, a cage, you can capture this dog in it. You can even catch cats. But damn, cats are evil in this game. So you can talk to this person and uh, it can take you to other places for uh, the right price, of course. But for now, we're not gonna do that. And for the most part, I'm just gonna explore by foot because it's more rewarding. You can take the shortcuts if you're in a hurry, but we want to explore the game nice and easy. So now we're gonna go to the com commons and cantina. And here we have plenty of uh, interesting people to meet and talk to. Are just the bathrooms. Important here. 
so yeah there is a chat so it's cool like this is like a classroom and you can see it's kind of uh, well organized in here so they really thought about everything they really feel like they're living in this world it's not just a simple world without Everything has a purpose and a meaning, I suppose. Oh, we're gonna take that. It's good for crafting. Nothing in here. Well, that locker doesn't have any purpose, I suppose. <laughs> and if we go here, we can be sneaky. Go like this and close this door. I could go a little bit outside and try to steal, but it's really not worth it. And we can go through these cabinets, and we'll find some food. And when consumed, reduces all mechanical damage taken by 5%. Consuming food will remove effects of previous meals. So some of these meals are very powerful. Uh, so this is for bio damage. Although they are a bit heavy to take with us, but we'll take it nonetheless, because why not, it's free food. So it's for the various things, you know. Um, now in the beginning it's not gonna be super useful for us. We can do it without. But be careful that some of the food can be unhealthy. For example, this cave meat, this has to be cooked and should not be consumed raw. It's much tastier in the form of cooked meals, yeah. And we can even cook. Let's see if this shelves have anything on them. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I could remove. Tenor is over here, but first we're gonna have some conversations in this place. And this is where I think the game starts to shine when it comes to the RPG elements. You met Arlene during the testing period. She's in charge of the food preparation and rationing. Ha! We used to make fun of uh, Tenor's stupidly high standards when admitting new people. Mm, not the end of uh, the world if we uh, get some imperfect reset and here you are bringing us earthquakes one day <laughs> on day one persuade so since we have a little bit of persuasion hey you don't have to be me i'm perfect <laughs> so do i get to eat some real food now that i'm a citizen well aren't you a joker don't uh, remember hearing you complaining before Who's the dandy over there? Who's that dandy over there? Over there? That it's in Lanford. What can you tell me about him? He's a handsome man. Heh. <laughs> Comes to SGS from time to time. Uh, always dressed as sharp as a razor. He always, he's always flirting with the ladies. No exceptions. I've seen him uh, entertain quite a number of them, well, myself included, with some unusual psionic tricks. So that's also psionic trainer, that's cool, tricks. Well, he's a, uh, what you call it, temporal manipulator, which is one of the most interesting psionic schools. I highly recommend you try that one. It's one of those uh, Psy abilities dis disciplines, uh, what you call it, uh, but the thing is, the things he does, i never seen anyone else do before. He can manipulate time, but also only for specific objects, like uh, slowing down a fly so it moves its wings in slow motion, or making things hover in air, that sort of stuff. It's all parlor tricks, fun and uh, unusual, good to attract the ladies. He's Good looks and charisma make them uh, stick around, though. He's a real magic. Mm. 
know anything else about him, where he's from, what he does, not much. He's talkative but uh, reveals little about himself. When you think about it, no one knows where he, uh, he's from or when, what he does. He usually comes alone, maybe he lives with a girl, maybe not, depends. Always drinks fizzy water, yes. Uh, has that temporal manipulation things doing, going for him. And that's all I know really. Oh yeah, dress sharp as... Oh wait, I said that already. Thank you, there's something else I want to know. So what do you know about the earthquake? It's the earthquake. For us, not that bad, the south tunnel collapsed. So the train is out for a while. The station itself didn't suffer any major damage as far as I know. I heard it's much worse up north. Uh, something about Union's freighter crashing and getting uh, buried on a side rail near Core City. Man, I can already imagine all the vermin crawling out of their holes to take a bite of that cake. And I'm not talking about red hounds, which are the general vermin. <laughs> So what else uh, is new besides the earthquake? Gorski gathering up uh, his squad, don't know what they're up to, but uh, they're armed. So how bad? Okay, heard any good rumors? Apparently the free drones are becoming more and more active in the south under rail. Some even say they have a hideout in the junkyard. Mm. We'll learn more about these things as we play, but the rumors are quite cool to read through. Captain Svena recently told me uh, about another poor soul sailing the Silent Isles. Haven't seen him since. That's in the DLC part, in the expeditions. I heard Mordor's been acting, uh, some, uh, is acquiring some quality cigars lately. Wonder who's his supplier. I guess Junkard still hasn't got rid of uh, old Chopper. One more victim uh, found in pieces. We'll get to that later on. Rumor has it that there are quite a number of people sitting outside United Station Embassy in Junkard. Junkyard, uh, guess, guess. They've been uh, feeding them good. That's true. There's been a very there's been very little pirate activity lately. The black eels seem to be doing a damn fine job. I don't know how they get so much information from so far away, but whatever. Harold told me he's starting seeing more and more lurkers near the under passages. Exit. Apparently okay, okay, okay. So she's just gonna repeat some stuff. So Pressing tab. Okay, we can talk to Vansel, Ethel, uh, Ethan, sorry, and Jack Quicksilver, which is a very cool character, by the way. Uh -huh. I'm thinking a real standard offering side beetle brain soup again. Try one, it will blow your mind. Where's that cat? Ah, the cat is over here. Okay, meow cat. You are an asshole, I know. I'm gonna capture you if I want. I don't know, there actually... There is no need to capture animals in this game, like domestic ones, but I still like doing it. <laughs> and put them in my collection. Although some creatures you cannot catch. Um, I'm gonna leave these two for next time, and then we're gonna talk to Tanner, because that's how we start the real quest. These guys are still gonna give us some interesting things to do, but we'll do them on the road. So I really hope you guys enjoyed uh, our nice adventure over here, and that uh, Underrail piqued your interest. It's quite unique, and I really hope we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Okay guys, stay awesome. Catch you next time. Bye, 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 bye.